Hi folks! Welcome back to Metabox Tutorials. Today, we'll find out how to store the data in clonable fields in multiple rows in the database. Normally, the data saved in a custom field is stored in one row only, in the database, even when it is a clonable, a repeater field. Storing values in a row helps reduce the database size. However, it's so difficult to query posts by clonable fields values. Then, we should convert its data to be stored in multiple rows. It helps to improve query performance and brings some benefits in terms of management and flexibility in expanding and updating data. I have had a custom post type for events like this and also have a field to input start date. This field is clonable, so I can add multiple dates into the field. Let's go to the database and check how the values are stored in there. Here it is. The values are stored in a string of data and in a row only on the table. We will convert this string to an array with two elements and store them in two rows in the database. Before we go, you should back up your database before running the code following this tutorial. If you have a staging website or a copy of your website on your local host, test the code on that first. Metabox provides an option to set the clonable field to store values in multiple rows. In the settings of the fields using the UI provided by the Metabox Builder extension, whenever you set the field as clonable, there will be an extra setting named clone as multiple right below the clonable option. Just turn it on. In the case that you prefer to register the fields using code, then add this option to the code. Then, all the data you input to the field after this action will be stored in multiple rows. Let's create a new post to check that. I'm also adding some data to the field in this new post. Now, go back to check the database. The new data added to the field is stored in two different rows already. So, the new setting works well on all the new data. However, the data that I input before the change still is in one row. The setting doesn't affect it. Meanwhile, when you go to the post editor, you will see the old data is displayed wrong, as well as is not in different rows as before it'll be a string of text only. So now, we should convert the data manually in the next step. It should be recalled that we do this step only when you have existing data that is not stored in multiple rows. If you don't have this kind of data, just enable the setting of the field, then it'll be done. To convert the data to be stored in multiple rows, we should use code. Go to the theme folder, Create a new PHP file. Then add these lines of code. Let's go through these codes in detail. First, this is to query all the events in the custom post type with this slug. Next, this is to check if there is no post for the event. Do not execute the action below, since that when there is no post, there is no existing data in the field. If there is any existing post, these lines will get the value of the field. This one is to check if the values are in an array or not. If yes, it will run following actions. This line is to remove the custom field and its data from the database. 
And this one is a loop to list each value one by one. And insert a new row into the meta table for it. The data added to the table will have the meta key as the field ID. And the meta value is a single value that is saved in the field. This sets a secret key in the URL. You can set it on your own. This means that all the actions in this function run only when the secret key is run. Move to the function.php file. Add the PHP file that we've just created. Now, the data has not been converted yet. You have to access this URL. This action helps to run this secret key. Then the code in the PHP will run to convert the data. Go back to the database once again to check if the data is converted or not. The old data also is in two rows instead of one row as before. So, everything has been done automatically. Go to the post editor. The data also displays in the right format. Now all the data of the clonable field is in multiple rows. There is no need to run the converting action anymore. It should be run only once. To avoid it running again, we should go back to the functions file and remove this line. That's all for today's tutorial. I hope this is useful to you. If you want to learn more about how to play around with Metabox, please watch other tutorials on this channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to us for more tutorials. Bye.